the new 2017 MacBook Pro is finally here and you're probably surprised that we already have a 2017 MacBook and I'm surprised as well. So the previous redesign model that was released in November 2016, actually even December 2016 in some countries or even uh, even early 2017 in some and the stock was really really limited so chances are that if you do have a 2016 model you probably got it somewhere at the beginning of 2017. So you bought a 2016 model and just a few months after or maybe even a few weeks a new model just came out. So welcome to the Zen of Tech, I'm Daniel and here are 10 things you need to know about this new 2017 MacBook Pro. So as always grab some popcorn and enjoy. Okay, so this new 2017 MacBook Pro does come with updated specs. So yes, it's a new MacBook Pro. It's not just a fix, an under hood fix. So new processors, new GPUs, and some smaller improvements as well. So starting off with number one, probably the main thing that you're most curious about is, G is the GPU. So the GPU has always been the weakest point when it comes to Macs. Now we only have a dedicated GPU in the 15 inch MacBook Pro. And previously the highest end option that you could get was the Radeon Pro 460. Now, in the 2017 models, we have the Radeon Pro 560 as the highest-end model. This is most likely just a rebrand, right? Well, that's, that's what I believed actually at the beginning, and that's what most people believed, and it's not. It's actually a brand new GPU, even though it's actually really, really similar to the Radeon 460. So the Radeon Pro 460 comes with 1.86 teraflops of compute power, 16 compute units, and 80 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. The Radeon Pro 560 comes with 1.9 teraflops, so a tiny bit improvement there, still 16 compute units, and the memory bandwidth has also been improved a bit to 81 gigabytes per second. So definitely is a tiny bit better than the 2016 one, but not by that much. Now, the coolest thing when it comes to the GPU is that we no longer have the Radeon 550. So previously in the 2016 MacBooks, you could choose between Radeon uh, 450, 455, and 460. Now you only get the option to choose between the 555 and the 560. So in that case, let's compare the 450 from last year to the 555 from this year and see what difference there is. And the difference here is actually quite big. So uh, the previous one, the 450 came with one teraflop of compute power, 10 compute units, and the memory bandwidth of 80 gigabytes per second. The 555 comes with 1.3 teraflops, uh, so a pretty noticeable difference there. 12 compute units, again, a pretty noticeable difference here as well, and 81 gigabytes per second as the memory bandwidth. Now the 555, same as with the 450, and the 455 still have uh, two gigabytes of GDR5 VRAM. So yeah, if you want four gigabytes of VRAM, you have to go for the uh, 560 model, but still, if you just want to get the baseline option, then this is actually a pretty big improvement from last year, even though I highly, highly recommend you upgrading to the 560 if you can. Then number two, we still don't have 32 gigabytes of RAM in the MacBook Pros, so the maxed out option that you can get comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, in my what to expect video, I actually expected this to come with 32 gigabytes of RAM because I believed that Cabby Lake comes with LPDDR4 support, which it doesn't, so my mistake. So LPDDR is basically a low power version of DDR, so it consumes less energy. At the moment, Apple uses LPDDR3 memory, which maxes out at uh, 16 gigabytes. Now LPDDR4 does support 32 gigabytes of RAM, but that one won't come until Canon Lake. So the next architecture, the current one is Cabby Lake in the 2017 MacBooks. The next one is going to be Coffee Lake, and the next one is going to be Canon Lake. So only Canon Lake would support uh, LPDDR4 and 32 gigabytes of RAM. I don't see Apple releasing another 2017 MacBook Pro this year, so most likely the 2018 ones will come with Canon Lake. Now Canon Lake is the biggest change when it comes to the new CPU architecture. So this is based on a 10 nanometer process finally, and the performance improvements are said to be about 30% better than Coffee Lake. So about a 30% performance improvement, 32 gigabytes of RAM, all PDDR4. Wow, this is definitely going to be a pretty huge upgrade and most likely some GPU improvements, some major GPU improvements in 2018 MacBooks as well. Now this will only happen in 2018 if Apple decides to skip Coffee Lake and go with Canon Lake instead. Hopefully this will happen, hopefully. Okay, so we know that the GPU got some pretty minor improvements. No improvements when it comes to the RAM, but what about the processor itself? So Yes, the architecture is finally changed. So we have the, the new Cabby Lake architecture up from Sky Lake, and Cabby Lake is basically a re-engineered Sky Lake, so to say. So it's an improved Sky Lake. It's not a completely new architecture. Intel used to have this TikTok 
process in which they had one year there was a new process and the other year it was an optimization for that process. So Broadwell was the new process, Skylake was the optimization, then the next one should have been a new process, but Intel killed the uh, TikTok cycle. So now Cabby Lake is the first optimization of the optimization, which is Skylake, and then the next one, Coffee Lake, is going to be the second optimization of Skylake. I'll get into more detail about all those Cabby Lake improvements that we are getting with the 2017 MacBook Pros, but now what about the clocks of the CPU itself? So we actually got some pretty big improvements here. So the base frequency for the 15-inch MacBook Pro was increased from 2.6 GHz to 2.8, the 2.7 model to 2.9, and the highest end model, which was 2.9, it was increased to 3.1. Now keep in mind that this is only the base frequency, so this is if you don't take the turbo boost into consideration. And the 13-inch MacBook Pro, this one actually got some pretty big improvements as well. So from 2.0 GHz, up to uh, 2.3, this is the baseline model, and then from 2.9 to 3.1. So these are some pretty nice clock boosts, considering that the price has essentially remained the same. Not even to mention that you do get the brand new Cabby Lake architecture, which I will cover in more detail soon. At number four, the keyboard has been slightly improved, slightly. So apparently there's a new switch bracket that's supposed to make the keys last longer. We don't have any reports when it comes to those sticky slash clicky noise yet. So the keyboard on the 2016 MacBook Pros had a lot of issues. The main one was that high-pitched noise. So if, if when the MacBook Pro got hot, uh, the keys made this really high-pitched sound. Number five, going back to those Cabby Lake improvements that I was talking about before, Cabby Lake finally supports 10-bit video decoding and encoding. So Skylake supported hardware encoding for 8-bit videos 4K H.264. Cabby Lake now supports hardware encoding for 10-bit videos, 4K, H.265, and also HEVC. Now, QuickSync does get a couple of small improvements as well, and when it comes to uh, decoding 4K videos, yes, uh, Netflix actually relies on HEVC encoding, so if you watch a lot of Netflix, even 4K Netflix, it's actually the battery life is going to last, last you a lot longer on the 2017 MacBooks. This is because of the hardware support for decoding 4K HEVC videos. Number six, I'm guessing that most of you probably have this issue. You want to buy a new MacBook or a new Mac, but the MacBook Pros are good, they're portable, the processor is pretty good, but a GPU is pretty weak. But then if you want to buy an iMac, the iMac is much more powerful than the MacBook, especially GPU-wise, but it's not portable. So macOS High Sierra, which is the new operating system coming out in September, that one actually includes support, native support for external GPUs. So if you buy, let's say, an enclosure, an external GPU enclosure by Thunderbolt 3, you can buy your own GPU, you can buy something like the NVIDIA uh, 1080, for example. Or if you want to use a lot of Apple software, such as Final Cut Pro, and do a lot of video editing, then you're much better off with an AMD card. So you can buy something like the AMD RX 580, which is actually a bit more powerful than the AMD uh, Pro 580, which is the one that you get in the highest end version of the iMac. So yeah, what I'm saying is that if you wish, you can have a MacBook Pro that's more powerful GPU-wise than the most powerful iMac that you can get right now. So this is going to work with the 2016 and 2017 MacBook Pros, obviously because they have Thunderbolt 3. It's not going to be cheap, it's going to cost you about $700 or $600, obviously depending on what external enclosure you buy and what GPU you buy, but it's possible. It's possible to have a MacBook Pro that's more powerful than the most powerful iMac on iMac Pro that you can buy. Number seven, unfortunately we don't have any battery improvements when it comes to the actual battery size inside the new 2017 MacBook Pros. So here's something really interesting. Remember the 12 inch MacBook. So the 12 inch MacBook, that really thin MacBook, that one actually comes with something pretty unique and that's stacked battery. So the battery inside the 12 inch MacBook is actually shaped so that it fills every single space, every single free space, empty space inside the 12 inch MacBook. Now this is something really cool, really unique and innovative and everyone was expecting this to come in the 2016 and the 2017 MacBooks as well, but it didn't. The new MacBook Pros still use the exact same battery size, the exact same battery shape as the old MacBook Pros, so the 2012 Retina MacBook Pros. Now apparently Apple was working on implementing this new shaped battery, uh, this new stacked battery inside the MacBook Pros, but they didn't have time to finish the design, so they actually ran into a couple of issues, reason why they released the 2016 MacBook Pros early, and they didn't include Cabby Lake processors, only Skylake, even though Skylake was more than a year old. So if you take a look at the insides of the MacBook Pro, you can see how much free space, how much empty space and unused space there is inside. Yeah, this empty space should have been filled with those stacked batteries, just like in the 12 inch MacBook, but unfortunately that never ended happening. I was expecting this to be fixed with the 2017 MacBooks, but no, apparently they haven't fixed it yet. Maybe they simply decided to cancel those stacked batteries 
but it's pretty interesting to see that one version of the MacBook Pro would have been with those stacked batteries. Hopefully, hopefully, even though I wouldn't count on this, the 2018 MacBooks will come with this new battery design, hopefully. At number eight, we have a brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro model that's actually cheaper than the cheapest one from 2016. Back in 2016, the baseline option was 1,450 pounds for the baseline one. So 2.0 gigahertz i5 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes SSD, and the Intel Iris 540 graphics. Now the 2017 baseline is 1,250 pounds, 2.3 gigahertz i5, Kaby Lake instead of Skylake processor, still eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, but now we only have an 128 gigabytes SSD and the Intel Iris Plus 640 graphics. So a pretty big decrease when it comes to the price. However, if you upgrade the storage to 256 gigabytes, you basically have the exact same price option as last year. But still, it's pretty good that you do have the option to get a MacBook that's cheaper and comes with less storage if you really don't need 256 gigabytes of storage, even though, honestly, don't buy a MacBook that only comes with 128 don't do that, 256 at least. Now speaking of the 13 inch MacBook Pro, this one actually got some even bigger GPU improvements than the 15 inch one. So the Intel Iris Plus 640 is actually quite substantially better than the Intel Iris 540. So overall, it's actually about 30% faster, but you can also upgrade this to the 650 if you really wish for even faster performance. Number 10, this is a pretty interesting one. So I don't think any of you know this, but here's the thing, Thunderbolt 3, only supports DisplayPort 1.2, not DisplayPort 1.3. Okay, Daniel, so what does this mean? Well, it means that basically the new MacBook Pros and the 2016 MacBook Pros cannot drive a 5K display at 60 Hertz. They can only do 4K at 60 max. So how is the LG UltraFine display being run then? Well, Apple did a pretty clever trick. So they actually used two streams of DisplayPort 1.2. So they basically drive two uh, 1440p displays at 60 hertz. So yeah, the LG UltraFine 5K display is a multi-stream display. So it basically uses two display, two displays, uh, Quad HD resolution, and then those two form a 5K display altogether. DisplayPoint 1.3 might be supported in the 2018 MacBook. So we might finally be able to drive a full 5K display at 60 hertz, not two uh, 2.5K displays. And then the software basically combines those two. And that's basically how the LG UltraFine display works. I mean, you cannot actually tell the difference that it's a multi-stream display, not a single stream display. It works really well. So good job, Apple. And finally, if you're watching this video, you're probably aware of all the issues that the 2016 MacBook Pro has had. So the keyboard issues, that cracking slash popping noise issues, the uh, battery issues, the GPU issues, hinge issues, blown out speaker issues. I've actually had all of these issues on the MacBook Pro that I currently have. All of these issues, this is the second unit that I have. The first one was replaced. I'm, wa I'm waiting for this one to, to be fixed or replaced as well. So many issues. Now, unfortunately, at this time, we haven't had any reports that any of these issues were fixed. Definitely not a battery one. And I'm not exactly sure about that cracking slash popping noise issue or the keyboard issues. So most likely they're still there. Okay, so as a conclusion, having said all this, should you upgrade to the 2017 MacBook Pros? I would say, it depends. If you're coming from 2016 MacBook Pros, then no, it's, it's not worth it. The difference is pretty small, so don't upgrade. However, if you're coming from the 2015 MacBook Pros or even older, then yeah, I, th I think it's worth it. Even though the 2018 MacBook Pro, or at least the, uh, the one that's going to come with the Candle Lake processors and 32 gigabytes of RAM and the new GPUs, that's going to be an even bigger change. But hey, this is what I'm going to tell you every single year. This model is good, but the next one is going to be even better. So in the end, it depends if you really need a new MacBook Pro right now. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about a 2017 MacBook Pro. Do you think it's worth it over the 2016 one? And what computer, what laptop are you currently using right now? Feel free to subscribe if you have enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this one. And also be sure to enable notifications on my channel by simply tapping on that bell icon so that you are notified whenever I upload a brand new epic video. Feel free to give this video a like if you have enjoyed it, let me know. And also let me know in the comments if you're epic enough to make it until this point, until the end of this video by saying I was epic enough to make it until the end. But yeah, this has been pretty much it. So thank you all for watching this video. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. So no tech, signing out. Cheers.